Hi, everybody. This is Tom back in the rabbit hole. Um, there's been progress since the last time I shared a video, and I just wanted to give you kind of an update on where I am with my hobbing spindle project. Um, this has been a lot of fun so far, and I'm looking forward to completing it. Anyway, I hope you enjoy this video. I hope it's reasonably self-explanatory, and uh, as always, please feel free to hit like and subscribe. And if you have any questions, drop me a comment um, or if you have any feedback. Thanks very much for watching. This is the differential carrier assembly. It's got the uh, bearing buried in there, the 120 tooth uh, worm gear. Uh, it's gonna be the input from the lead compensation mechanism. I, I haven't mounted the bevel gears yet, but um, basically I'm gonna put a bore through there. Um, that's the right size for this uh, double row ball bearing and then I'm going to put a clamp on the outside so that I can move the ball bearing back and forth this way for adjustment. Um, I think that'll give me a good setup. I want to run this as close to zero lash as I can manage without the thing binding up uh, because this is kind of a primary and direct input to the spindle position, and particularly when I start cutting helical gears, I'm gonna get a, a moment. The cutting force, part of the cutting force is gonna be resolved as a moment, so I don't want there to be a lot of play. Now this is one of those things that I never seem to fully anticipate. I wanted to cut both of these uh, bores on the same, uh, on the same center exactly but I don't have a boring bar long enough that's rigid enough to be able to do that. So I'm gonna to have to rotate the assembly by 180 degrees and zero on the bore and uh, get it the best I can that way. It should come out within a thou or two, but uh, we'll see. Kind of the first trial fit of the differential and it actually looks pretty good. Pieces are just setting in there. The last details of the bearing clamp arrangement on the spider gear carrier. Always a little apprehensive about slitting saw. Well, this is the spider gear carrier mounted on its hub. Uh, all I need to do is put some mounting holes in it and uh, I think this piece is done. It's looking pretty good.
making the spacer rings for my first um, super precision bearing pack. The key element here is they have to be as close to exactly the same uh, dimension along the axis as possible. So the same thickness along the axis. And I'm doing that with a fly cutter. I'm just taking off a couple of thousands. And without changing the setup, I'm gonna run the second ring through. Well, these are some of the parts for the spindle project. This is the differential carrier. It goes on the end of the main shaft. This is the output shaft and bearing support and worm. Uh, this, this handles the input from the index train and sends one output to the, uh, the feed train on the tape at the end of the table and the other end comes out this way into the differential. Good, uh, good progress. Well, I'm not sure why I'm doing this, but for some reason it occurred to me to try this. Okay, I'm getting ready to make a pass on the main shaft blank that's uh, three inch diameter stock at 12L14. Um, I'm a big believer in 12L14. Uh, a lot of guys invest in 4140 for something like this, but there's honestly no good reason for that. It's stronger, but uh, strength isn't the primary consideration. Rigidity is the primary consideration. and. Uh, all steel's pretty much the same there. Anyway, uh, this also serves as a lesson for why I upgraded from my Atlas 10 inch lathe uh, to this uh, Grizzly 16 by 40, uh, which people turn their noses up at, uh, at Chinese equipment, but this thing makes nothing but good parts uh, as long as I do my part.
your rotating components. That's the output shaft and worm. The main shaft there with the L00 taper. The tapered collar and, and locking ring there. The differential carrier and the lead compensation worm gear and worm. Um, they're really, uh, I've got a few minor rotating components to make the smaller shafts and bearing supports. I have to make the large bearing support that, that um, mounts the main shaft. Um, but this is most of the hard stuff done. Um, This is the inner workings of the lead compensation and final drive spindle for the hobbing machine. Laid out more or less the way it's going to go, but upside down. The worm drives will be on the bottom uh, in the final version, but uh, you can kind of get an idea for how this thing is shaped. This is the output assembly that feeds the feed train on the table and also feeds the differential and then the signal comes from the feed train through a set of change gears to the compensation worm uh, which adds its motion to the motion that comes from the index train and drives this final spindle um, and this is looking um, pretty okay well, the next part of this saga is I need to turn this 60 pound chunk of steel into a main shaft bearing support. Stay tuned for that. Again, thanks for watching.